And joining us right now on the phone, we're going to talk with uh, Ben Cohen, the Wall Street Journal sports reporter. There's a great new book out, getting a lot of great press out there, called The Hot Hand, The Mystery and Science of Streets. And we're joined today by uh, Ben on the telephone from, uh, I believe, up in New York. And uh, Ben, good to talk with you. How are you? Thanks for having me. I am in New York indeed. I, I guess this is uh, your phone has been blowing up since last night. We'll get to the book in a minute, but uh, with the NBA suspending the season, you cover the NBA for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, you must have been going nuts what, all the NBA night. suspended its season last night? I was, I was <laughs> Uh, heard yet? Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, quite the news. No, it's a it's a crazy night. I mean, this is a story that is moving and changing hourly, right? And we are trying to uh, look at it uh, weeks and months ahead. It's it's crazy. I mean, I, I I think it is quite an understatement to say that like sports has never seen anything like this. It's probably the most severe disruption to the sports calendar in like more than a half century. And I think it's sort of just getting started. I think the NBA. Suspending a season last night was kind of the first domino to fall for American sports. And so what happens over the rest of this day and over the rest of the, like, the week, I think is going to be really fascinating and, and probably a little bit painful. Yeah, I guess like you, like me, like anybody that does what we, we do, uh, you're constantly monitoring, uh, especially you know today's technology, what's going on. And literally, last night I was watching something else, and I flipped on uh, a channel, and then I heard about the NBA being suspended. It's literally a minute-to-minute story now. It used to be stories that would have a it, couple it of hours, right? Is. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, the NBA wrapped a conference call with its owners on Wednesday afternoon, expecting to talk again on Thursday and figure out whether they could play games with no fans, or, or what they should do. And I was on my phone, I was eating dinner, and um, it, it became clear that there was this situation in Oklahoma City that players were being pulled off the floor, I mean, seconds before tip-off. And right. it seemed obvious that, like, something big was happening. And I, I, it just changed so quickly. I mean, over the course of a few hours, the league went from talking again to Thursday morning to suspending its season indefinitely. And I, I think we are going to see more of that. Like, I, I, I would be shocked if there weren't, you know, huge changes to the NCAA tournament. We've already seen there will be no fans, but, like, given the way that this momentum is building, I mean, the NCAA tournament starts in a week. A lot is changing minute to minute, hour to hour. I can't even imagine what this world is going to look like in a week. Yeah, we have the uh, couple of rounds, uh, early rounds here in Tampa, and, of course, uh, spring training down here, so we're keeping an eye on that. But yeah. uh, anyway, that's a fluid story. Let's talk about your book, which uh, does have a, a connection to basketball. Uh, uh, the hot yeah. hand is a, is a term that uh, is mostly associated with basketball, not necessarily all the time, but uh, you kind of run into the... Uh, the mystery and science of streets is the subtitle of it. Uh, we've heard that term, and maybe it's kind of a, a cliche, but there is, is actually something to it, right? You, you've kind of delved into that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's funny because this is a phenomenon, as you said, that has always been studied through basketball. And in basketball, we sort of know what it is. It's when you make one shot, and then another shot, and then another shot, and you feel more likely to make your next shot. You right. feel like you can't miss. You are in the zone. You're on fire. But it's actually not just basketball. And that's why these brilliant scholars, these Nobel prize winners in some cases, have studied the hot hand of basketball because this is really about human behavior. And it's a question of like, you know, can you take these hot hand periods in your lives and take advantage and like let it elevate your career and sometimes even change your life? And even more than that, like, should we believe in the hot hand? Does this thing actually exist? And that seems like a simple question. As it turns out, it's not. It's something that has been studied and interrogated and debated by really smart people for a really long time. And that, to me, is the fun of this whole thing. It's like playing around with this idea and seeing where we land on it for ourselves. Hey, you talk about, again, the NBA, Stephen Curry, of course, uh, one of the great uh, long shooters uh, and maybe in NBA history, and, and you do a whole chapter on him and... Uh, uh, the three-point shots has been his specialty, right? So it's kind of interesting how you studied him. Yeah, and, 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 you know, the interesting thing about Steph Curry is that, like, the, I've talked to him about the hottest game he ever had, and it was against the Knicks in Madison Square Garden in February 2013. And it feels like a very long time ago, but, like, it actually wasn't. And before then, you know, Steph Curry averaged, I think, 18 points a game on five three-pointers per game. Since then, he's averaged 26 points per game on 10 threes per game. Because what happened that game is that he scored 54 points, he made 11 of his 13 three-pointers. It is the single hottest night of his entire career. Uh, and it kind of changed his life, and it changed the fate of the Golden State Warriors. And given the way they've dominated the league, or they had anyway, it kind of changed the future of the entire NBA. And that, to me, is the power of the hot hand is that like this is not just an isolated incident there are real long-term effects for some people 
when they get hot. And like when I thought about who should I write about in basketball with the hot hand, like the greatest shooter in the history of the planet seemed like a pretty good place to start. And like what makes Steph Curry interesting to me is that when I asked him, like, do you know, even you, like, can you sense when you're about to get hot? Because I can't. Like, I'm a terrible basketball player. Like, when I walk onto a court, like, I don't know if that's going to be a good night or not. And what he says, like, in that way, and maybe only that way, Steph Curry's actually a bit like me. He says he doesn't know when he's going to get hot or why or how or where he's going to get hot. But once he does get hot, he has to embrace it. And I think that's probably the best way to think about this. Once you do get hot, you have to embrace it. And so, like, we embrace it, and we try not to get burned by it when it backfires. There's a long-suffering Knicks fan. I grew up in New York, Ben. Uh, it seems like all the great players had their biggest hot hands against the Knicks at the Garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what the most amazing thing about that game against the Warriors was is that it was so long ago that Steph Curry scored 54 points at the greatest night of his life, and the New York Knicks actually won. Yeah, right. Yeah, that does happen occasionally. I know Kobe had a great night there. Yeah. I go back as a kid, uh, probably before your time, Pistol Pete Maravich. We saw him play, and he, he would uh, have a hot hand. You see these great players who come to New York, and like you said, you knew they were going to hit it. You know, they are going to have 30, 40 points. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny. On the night that Curry came to the Garden, there were the, the, the three players who had scored the most points from uh, as a visitor, like the guys who had left, who had come into the Garden on the road team and scored the most points were Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Kobe Bryant. Right. So, like, you know, you're looking at some of the three greatest ever when Curry came in that night and, and scored 54 points. Like, nobody expected that from him. It's funny you mentioned Maravich because that's always the name that people talk about. Like, that guy would have been Steph Curry, right? Like, if oh, he has no a three-point line, how many points would he have averaged? It would have been incredible. And sadly, he's almost forgotten. I watched recently a thing on ESPN about him, and, and I remember as a kid watching him, but uh, yeah, he's, he's almost forgotten. That's one of the all time great But you're right, he, he was like the early, you know, the, the, the first Stephen Curry, right? Just the way he shot from the outside. Yeah, and like, you know, what Steph Curry really benefits from is playing now, playing at a time when NBA teams have finally come around to the idea that three is worth more than two. I'm not really sure what took them so long. Like, the fact that three pointers are worth more than two is in the name of the shot. There's clearly like this huge reward and bonus for guys who could shoot like Steph Curry, but clearly what we've learned is that Steph Curry in 1985 is not is not the same Steph Curry as he was in, you know, 2005, 2015, or especially 2020. There's never been such a premium on the ability to shoot the basketball. Yeah. I know we have limited time. I know the, the converse of the hot hand, and you have a great chapter on that, too, uh, uh, about the gambler's fallacy, right? People think because a number yeah. might come up uh, several times in the roulette table or whatever game you're playing, it has to come up again, but that, that isn't true, right? No, and it's, it, it's, it's interesting. The, 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 the opposite of the hot hand is not the cold hand. It's this thing called the gambler's fallacy. When, when you're in basketball and you see someone make three shots in a row, everyone thinks he's making his fourth shot. But when you walk into a casino and you see the roulette wheel land on red three times in a row, what research has shown is that most people actually bet on black that time. So what's the difference? Like, why do we bet on the streak to end instead of continue? To me, it's the one of control. It's like when we know we have agency of our situation, that's when we can have a hot hand. When we recognize that we are at the mercy of chance, however, when we walk into a casino, we sort of feel the opposite way and we bet against the hot hand. And so to me, that was really interesting that you could see the same exact situation, right? Three things in a row happening and come to exactly opposite conclusions. Yeah, fascinating. And the book is fascinating. It's called The Hot Hand, The Mystery and the Science of Streets. Lots of great examples in the book that has done the research on. And, of course, he's with the Wall Street uh, Journal. And, uh, Ben, you have a website you want to direct people to, get more information on the book? Yeah, BZ Cohen. B is in boy, Z is in zebra, Cohen.com. You can find everything you want to know about this book on that website. Ben, pleasure talking to you. I know you're going to be busy for the next uh, who knows how long. We're all going to be watching it, but you're going to be right in the middle of it. So uh, good luck with that, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.